No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today, Remo, you've been telling me about you guys for a while, saying, Adam, you got to you gotta go to Box Fest. You got to tap in with the Box Boys. So we tapping in with the Box Boys. Yeah, here, man. Word, man. Appreciate y'all having time. us. It's about time. How you guys doing? Good, Good man. How you doing? It Dope. Like, yeah. Pain in the ass drive up here. Was it really? Traffic. And Coming all. from where? Orange County. Oh, shit. That's oh, where you guys stay at? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. How the hell did you end up out there? Parents just moved down there when we were like two. Oh, so you like we grew up there? We were born here. Okay. They were born here. And then now we yeah we both grew up in Orange County through the past ninety yeah. percent of our life. Really. Yeah. What's it like growing up in Orange County? Talk He's real quiet this. and peaceful. peaceful. Yeah. You got to drive up here for like you know all the work stuff, the shows we throw and whatnot. Right. Different vibe from out you know? here, but it's nice. Two different environments for sure. The chillest of vibes. Yes. Yeah. Very laid back down there. Yeah, for sure. But you know when you come out here, it's a whole different, whole different just type of vibe. Definitely. So, how did you guys meet? We're brothers. We're brothers. Oh, what? Same oh yeah, I knew that. I Most people yeah. think <laughs> twins. I just gained consciousness. No, we used to look like twins, yeah. but now he's got the beard. I got the yeah, long hair, yeah. so now we look different. But that's crazy. Back, you guys really the first time anyone's ever asked us how y'all meet. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. First, yeah. Nah, my bad. No, 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 no that's just, that just funny. The looks different because everyone too. thinks we're twins. Yeah, at least yeah. everyone thinks we're twins. We used to look like it. Yeah, I used to for sure think y'all were twins. Yeah, but did you did you go out of your way to be like I'm gonna get facial piercings and grow my hair out so that we'll look way different? Yeah, right. I watched the other interview of you and you didn't have that shit. No, no, just 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 the whole look thing but yeah i know it's been cool working yeah. with the brother along the side so we have our own style physically oh, yeah, artistically yeah. and it's cool but we we work really well together so you guys were always into music like together and shit was that always your primary interest yeah i think yeah. That's what, i think it was like middle school for me like you know x suicide boys i was mm-hmm. like you know he he put me on actually i was like in sixth grade and like i just fell in love with that whole scene bones such hollow water boys like that whole scene and then, um i just stayed in the underground rap since then just like find out what's new keeping up with it and at a young age like that's all you know music in school um and yeah we just sort of like just started like finding what we what we fucked with, what we didn't fuck with and uh we just sort of picked up a camera along the way and we're like yo like let's film these rappers and uh because cole bennett was one of like our biggest inspirations mm-hmm. when uh you know the blueprint one off him and you know with the whole juice and little skies and little zen and he showed and everybody whatnot. what you could really build with just with making music videos uh-huh. you know because yeah. he built something that was so much bigger than just like yeah. oh a youtube channel where you post videos yeah. you know 100 percent. like he like paved the way you know you don't you know you don't need to be a a rapper to like have you know influence and creative control with you know this whole culture and the rap scene i feel like he was one of the first people to do it and we just sort of just picked up on it because we just love the culture and whatnot so we sort of Followed along the same steps, and you know, we found ourselves just the upcoming wave now. The upcoming so it's wave, like it's, and just one thing, one it's all thing. new at the, at the end day. It's like all new beginnings, so like we're figuring out like this underground coming up is way different from what my brother and I were into like 2016, 17. So it's just that feeling that we had 2016, 17. I and feel it was like, like we, watching you as well, like all the interviews yeah, that well. interview, cool, it was like a little like, full circle moment as well. No, because when I think about that time period, and especially because I've been working on this like documentary thing, and when I go back and like read the comments on old interviews, people were so. F- and thankful for me interviewing underground rappers because it really wasn't happening that much. No. Like when I interviewed Puya or X or yeah, whoever, yeah. it was like there wasn't really other people who were interested mm-hmm. in it at the time, which is so different than yeah. now where there's like hella competition to yes. interview people, you know? No, you were the blueprint for sure because I can name, you know, back in middle school, it was no jumper and, you know, just double a handful, just a handful. those like mm-hmm. blogs and one of us, like as far as like ca- actual like content with rappers and f- interviews, like it was really. Yeah. I also think like for social sure. media was so fresh. Like yeah. Instagram was like just beginning to pop up as a platform for people to push. Because I remember it's my sophomore year, like 2014, I was like just getting on Instagram, finding out the underground, and then like people were just putting their careers through it. And like now we're 10 years in, so everyone knows what's up. Everyone's doing this shit. So I think it's just a different, a different. I feel like everybody's feel. more skeptical now. Yeah. Where it used to be like, oh, you're like a young ass rapper with pink hair and a face tattoo. Like we're interested in you. Like I wonder what this dude's all about. Whereas now yeah. it's like, Fuck this dude. Like I ain't even heard him yet. <laughs> Fuck him. It's like who doesn't do that? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like people are hella like judgmental. Like and you've come across a lot of rappers. Like all, yeah. like you know, definitely some. But so how long were you guys shooting music videos for before you started to focus on events? So like the origin of Box Boys, I started it sophomore year, mm. uh, not sophomore year, junior year. I was seventeen. He gave me his hand-me-down camera because he was doing his own film. I was doing videos time. for like a year prior, just mm-hmm. under my name before that. So when happened. he upgraded his camera, he gave me like, "Yo, here's my old one. I'm like, Fuck it. let's rock with it." And um, with the whole Cole Bennett shit, I sort of wanted to start like my own version of Lyrical Lemonade, but so more so like a collective on some like ASAP Mob shit. Mm. And um, it was supposed to be with a group of kids, uh, like my, my friends at the time in high school. And uh, you know how high school shit happens, you know, an idea comes up and no one just like all half ass it falls through. Then, yeah. But I was real committed. I was like. Like I really have real passion for this shit, so I just like fuck it, me myself a camera, 
And uh, a couple months went by, and obviously I was filming my music videos, he was filming his music videos, and we were like, yo, like we're both brothers, we're doing the same shit. Let's just run this box with shit together. Mm. And bam, it was me and him. And then from that point forward, it was like a whole year and a half of just grinding out music videos, you know, filming like Josiah, Ego, like, you know, the whole Lil uh, you know, Xan punk the scene, too. Lil Xan, yeah, Lil Xan. Um, and we just became friends with so many artists after like a year and a half, we're like, yo, like, let's throw our first show ever. Mm. And that's how Box just came about. Right. So like through the music videos, we just became friends with all these artists and whatnot. The and network is cool easy to build to shows from the start. Yeah. From there, yeah. When you say collective, what do you mean? Like, were you guys like a collective of like rappers? Or no, collective there was of way creators, more people creators, at first, designers, right? Like yeah, designers, yeah, producers. Also, no, it was supposed to be, but when like when it started, started it was just me. Oh, okay. And then you know my brother John, and we just been running it up ever since. Right. Now we have like a whole. Now we have like actual collective, you know, with you know professional teams and whatnot. And, you know, just cool. It's cool to see what it like it's grown into from the past like four. I think we just hit four years this year. Definitely. This yeah, year was yeah, February, year four. Years. How do you make events special when uh, doing events is like so blown out and played out? And it feels like, uh, uh, especially after COVID, a lot of the audience kind of like moved on past going to rap shows. Yeah. It kind of felt like, mm-hmm. like, how do you make your shit like really stand out? Because you guys are like building a brand that's largely about like, yeah. the experience that people have going to these shows. No. How do you make it special? Something me and my brother always talk about is like, damn, like we caught that like that sh- live show wave. Right after COVID, when no one was too scared, of, when people were too scared, that to stopped. We were initially just doing the videos and filming shows, and then COVID stopped us. Like, no, yeah, we can't do that. And shit. so, like, coming out of COVID, we're like, let's see how this show shit is about. And we had to go through so many loopholes with vaccines and mm. and masks. And I remember it got to the point where I had a fake of vaccine, like I made like a. I'm sorry, this is so federal, but I'm, I made like a fake <laughs> vaccine, and I was sending it out to like these kids that wanted to come because the venue was like, yo, they can't come if they're not vaccinated. And I'm not gonna tell you like these kids to get vaccinated. I'm like, yo, here's a fake card. Write your I, I, name on it. Our show. I feel like that show. was a thing for like a month. Yeah. Like yeah. people <laughs> thought that they were really gonna <laughs> be like able to check. Jailed for not being vaccinated. I definitely yeah. went to some events and shit where like they, they were checking my vax card. No, I went to a literally. wedding where they checked my <laughs> vaccine card on the way in. No, it was yeah. real. It was real. No, it was we real. said this before too, but I think the biggest thing that made it special was advice from Josiah. He said, make sure your your festival seems like a playlist. If someone has a playlist, like if you were to come live, all six artists, like that's someone's yeah, playlist yeah, like in their phone. Make sure and stuff. sonically sounds good, because I feel like when some people try to do lineups, it'll be like five different rappers, five different genres, and it doesn't mesh well, mm. and the crowds don't mesh well, because they're all you know different types of people, and it's like it's all about unison and like really coming up and like you know a kick ass of a show and like where everyone's just. With the same they can music, yell every same lyric vibe. to every artist from. Uh, I start feel to like pen. you have to have the balls to book a, a lineup of artists that are actually like representative of the vibe that you're going for, yeah. regardless of a, that means that it's going to be a smaller show at first or whatever. And then I also feel like there's a thing that happens when you DJ a show where you might have like ill underground music taste, but mm-hmm. when you're DJing, it's very tempting to play. F- and finito and walk a yeah. flock of heart yeah. in the paint and all this yeah. shit that will actually make the crowd go uh-huh. crazy. Mm-hmm. So you kind of have to like book DJs and like give them the freedom to say like, hey, like play this underground shit yeah. that the audience yeah. like we want an audience that's going to appreciate yeah. that. And if they don't move because they don't know these songs, like let that be mm-hmm. a experience of sort of like enlightenment for them where they get turned on to new yeah. artists at this kind what of. What do you event. say like back in 2016, people were more closed minded or less closed minded? It's like new music and whatnot. I feel like people were more open minded in 2016. 2016 for sure because shit just wasn't as played out and like yeah. when you think about it now it's like it's hard to imagine people being as hyped on like a little pump yeah you yeah, know like because right. it's like oh he's 16 and he does xanax and he got face tattoos and he's like that's got so some, some good like, songs cool. Looking some back good at songs now, realistically but like people were going crazy for it and now i feel like it would just be like they'd be memeing him if he came out yeah, today you yeah know? yeah that's know. something like if you pull like a your typical dreadhead with face tats in this day and age, like how would the scene react? And people yeah. get clowned on. Like I feel like, but it is cool. It's like I people feel like it's are a more s- susceptible to getting clowned on now. Like a rapper, like you, bro, they be flaming these rappers now, bro. For mm-hmm. even like the littlest shit, the littlest oh, yeah. shit right? they get rejected by a girl, they flame you. Those in the comments yeah, just bring it up every single time. Like the whole Kaisen Nash shit. Did you see when he got rejected by Tyler? Yeah, he ended up on national news for vlogs everywhere. I'm like, bro, that's like. Couple uh, little things, bro. Little things. Like, that's like to the extreme. Obviously, with these rappers now, like they they do some shit. They they get flamed and they get you know more criticism to them. But when you look at Kai and, a and Ross, I feel like they're masters of like make it of just like thinking of things that will go viral and then having the team behind them to actually make that shit go viral. You know, like mm-hmm. with Aiden Ross and Sexy Red, like that was all a play. Yeah. Like th- yeah. he said something about he f- 
doctor. And then she responds, and like this is a whole news cycle. And then it comes out that he's actually just like a co-star in her music video. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, oh, okay, yeah. so this was all like a long rollout yeah. to a music mm-hmm. video. Makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I feel like it's kind of hard to distinguish like what's a rollout and what's real. Yeah. Some people just really buy into the rollout and be like, yo, no, no, he actually f- there, but it's like, nah, like. So music video game. Like having been behind the scenes on this shit, for sure, I don't know if that Tyler thing was fake. Because <laughs> like, it's totally within Kaisenot's wheelhouse yeah. to have his manager saying like, listen, we have a viral idea. He's gonna tell. He's gonna ask you on a date. You're gonna say no. It's gonna be funny as fuck. It'll go viral. Like, but Ka- like, you kind of got to be down if you're really making content yeah. like that to be the butt of the joke. Yeah, 100%. You know, yeah. like, I feel like that's what sort of this underground shit is sort of not in butt of the joke, but like more so like. There's sort of like a little niche they gotta like apply themselves to, or a certain like agenda where there's like you know, let me agenda. For example, like too. Ian. Ian's hard as. F- right. I feel like obviously he's white. Not you know you listen to his music, you don't think he's white, but right. he's hard as. F- yeah. And his look like, is very simple too, you know, but it's working. Also, people like Ned Spen and like you know Ye, where it's like damn, like you like you're a white boy, so like I have like that shock value is basically you know instead of being by the drug, like they want to be like the shock value of, of which is cool because it's like you know it's not your typical. Dreadhead with tats. It's more so like you know anyone can look how they want to look and still make some good music. And that audience is like maybe smaller than it was in 2016, but they're like super passionate about new up and coming underground yeah, shit. Yeah. And they're just like, I feel like that's the kind of audience that you guys are tapping into, and not even like SoundCloud 2.0, like Sofago era, like all those type of dudes when they were coming out. I feel like now we're in like the middle of like a different generation mm-hmm. that's kind of right a little like transition period it's, it's like it's always like a five-year four-year cycle where it's like you know people will have their raise or they like their rise and it'll get filtered to the like next generation because four years ago it was 2020 like who were popping artists in 2020 it was, it was like, like prime quarantine right or like right before yeah. quarantine who was like who, who's, who's dumping e- Fago, yeah. like no, this one, they were on the ground, on the yeah, ground. Yeah, those more underground at that time. So damn, but like who really, who was really like the center of attention? I feel like 2020 was like peak gang rap as well of yeah, like where that's where shit started to get like mega street it's like pop smug right that Somewhere type of shit like, like, had young boy like dirk yeah, yeah, and then that. everybody like around that because that's kind of what happened with like the whole original like soundcloud era is it kind of like turned into like oh let's like listen to actual gang members who like legitimately have killed people <laughs> so we can yeah. believe their lyrics yeah you know yeah so in a way like uh, covid kind of helped you guys oh no for sure shit, for, for sure, sure. yeah but we had these conversations all the time where it's like bro like covid damn near birth box boys because it's like you know right before quarantine you know it was sort of like i was it was just like a weird thing where it's like you know pre-quarantine there wasn't that many moves to be made in the underground because like everything was going too mainstream mm-hmm. but covid is sort of like backtrack like you know what who was coming up because it, it stopped a lot of shit it it fucked a lot of careers it started a lot of careers and like we were just fortunate to like you know use that to the best of our ability it's like you know coming off of quarantine bam let's be the first people throwing shows and we did it and you know we just kept on building on that and new arts were coming up because i feel like also in quarantine kids got real used to you know being on band lab and recording their closet and having millions of streams off a song and they made in their bedroom and it's like it was things became real internet yeah things became real internet. so if you weren't you know hip to the internet like you sort of just got lost in the sauce Watch out. yeah you're you're not, out. that's facts because like there were like multiple like companies that i know who are doing events in 2014 2015 that whole era and then like once COVID hit they stopped doing events and then they just kind of never really made like a full comeback and shit and i feel like you guys sort of seized that opportunity because you were smaller and like more nimble and and think about like rolling loud rolling loud's when the COVID shit happens Mm because they're big corporate they have to really go by the law and the rules and shit because they're not trying to get sued for millions of dollars yeah. but you guys are like able to sort of slip in there and like <laughs> a little risk build, build something yeah. different yeah. Yeah. we just like forced our way in bro because it's like so many kids and careers were just like birthed from COVID we're like yo like let's f- these people while no one's f- with them mm. and that's sort of how we just you know we just like and we generally f- with it too like it wasn't like we were trying to like force ourselves into it because you know I'm, I'm like the demographic that might you know I'm the target audience of my own shows because mm. I'm, I'm 20 I'm 20 I'm 21 now but like back then like it was a bunch of 19 18 year olds going to come to the shows like I was 19 17 throwing these shows so it was like I was making these lineups with my brother and we we're like yo like we actually fuck with these artists and so were the kids at the time so like it just works so like co- coherently but so it's difficult when you start doing that shit because if you don't really have like a bunch of relationships, like once you have some relationships, like where you guys are at now, I feel like it's easier to make shit happen because yeah, you have like other artists who can vouch for you and shit. But like, was it difficult booking like the first lineups and stuff? I know for sure. The was- first one was more just out of the blue. So we had like, like we said, we just had 
built our connections from the music video. So we had Josiah and a lot of upcoming artists, like one and only. So different genres, a mixture of all sorts of like funk and like scream rap. And we're like, yo, we have these 10 artists that are popping, but like this is just our general network right now. So let's just run a show with them, catch one, 300 people to see what we could do. And we like, we, we did the first venue that was 180, sold it out to 300. I'm like, okay, cool. There's some sort of foundation we've created here based off like what we what we know so far and then that created a buzz for our second box fest and that yeah. it was it created that foundation to be like okay now we have the head but it was definitely hard to build it was hard for, at first like, though yeah no one was doing shows we we're just filming music videos so it's like yeah. yo why they, are these videographers trying vision. to book me for a yeah. show and, and it was just shit. more so like just a bunch of loopholes you gotta jump through and i was like obviously what helped out a lot is like we're actually friends with these artists it mm. was so like not transactional i literally called them like yo like we're gonna do a show like with us and I was like, since they were like, yeah, like on some free shit, just like I got the love. Real. I was like, cool, I love, this, like, this is the power. That's the, one the thing, but like your relationships, you know, make or break your career for real. And it's like, mm. if you got some real solid people that f with you, you can go a long way. And that's sort of like what happened in our case is like these artists really f with us and we f with them, like they're actually like brothers to us. Because so like, you might not have even been able to do it in general without a bunch of like startup cash if it wasn't for no, the fact, yeah, right. like if you had had to book everybody oh, out there oh, regular. We, 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 no we, we actually yeah. want to do the, the bro, show for no, free no, too. Bro, mm -hmm. bro, we were offering like two, three free music videos per artist just to hop on our show. Cause like, mm -hmm. yo, we don't got no money right now. We'll shoot you two free music videos if you hop on our show. And just because they f with us, it's like, yeah, like, let's do it. And so, bam, they did our show. And next day after, we're shooting fucking 5,000 music videos to, you know, as payment for them hopping on our shit. And right. the first one was a free show, too. Like, we just wanted it to happen. The yeah. venue, the venue was work that was working with us, like, yeah, we wanted to do it free. We wanted to do it free, but like, nah, charge some bread, like, f 10 bucks. And we made a little bit. So and, uh, that yeah. got us into motion for the next one. Yeah, funding. Awful, and then, yeah, yeah. How much did you guys pay for the uh, first venue? It was like 1500 and then we paid like travel costs for someone. I forgot who it was. Total of like it was like two bands. It was like two yeah. bands. And then total, we, total. we made like four bands. And then with that, we're like, yo, like we got four bands. Let's throw, let's see who we can get for, you know, 500 bucks, 600 bucks. You know, we started, you know, investing into our shows. And, mm. you know, obviously we're still filming music videos too. So that's also like a form of income. And um, after the first box fest, uh, my brother and I did a music video for D Savage. And we just asked him, like, yo, like how much for a show? It was like five bands. So like, all right. We got we got five bands right now. Let's do it. And he held on their second box fest. And at that time too is when you know the whole plug and B scene started rising. The autumns, the summers, Baby Santana, Young Chris. This was 2021, so that's like that scene was really like starting to come up. And I was just I was going to events left and right trying to network and meet these people. And uh, one of these events I went to on Murrows was at Cookies and Kicks. Uh, Autumn was there, and I'm like, yo, like Autumn has never done a show in LA or like California period. So I just walked up to him like, yo, like I'm doing a show with D Savage. You trying to hop on? He's like, yeah. And like, I bet, like, changed numbers, put them on the flyer, announced them. And then, like, you know, other people started catching on. And we got, like, Young Chris, DC the Don, you know, sort of like these. I th that festival was the pivotal moment for Yeah, us, that was so pivotal because like, it's like, you really know, we really curated it. a whole lineup dedicated to a certain scene. And that, you know, that scene, you know, where is now the Yeats, the Kens, the Loans. Like, that's sort of where it's, you know, it's strung from. And it was just pretty cool to, like, see, like, how it evolved from D Savage headline. It's like, Nine, yeah, like yeah. nine. The third one was the, pretty similar was to the, the second one, one too. We threw in Sofago in there. Yeah, we had Sofago. Summers was supposed to headline that one, but obviously he had that whole shit with Jace and House Arrest. We had a like last minute call. We had a like just alley half court shot, and we're like, "Yo, can Fago headline?" And he, they, you know, they they this too. Like, like, like three, like, two you days. You gotta lean in on your relationships because obviously yeah. you know we're cool with like Lamar and like their whole team. So we just called them. Me and Jill were like, "Yo, like let's, let's see if Fago's gonna do it." Day before we called them, they said, "Yeah, I put him on the flyer." And that, the box S three was for sure like one of my favorite ones. It was crazy because we had promoed for like two, three months, and then three days before the show, Summer was like, "Yo, yeah, it won't be making." So mm -hmm. we knocked him off the flyer. We're like, "Bro, that's our headliner." That so then, within those three days, we were like, "What are we gonna do?" What it's one of those do? like you know when the pressure is starts you know I mean, yeah, flying. Like, what are you gonna do? All, right. all of them been in uh, L A. or that one. One of them was in New York. I believe that was the fourth. One, one. of the yeah, the fourth one. That so after the, three, that's when we did Lone Ken and Homicide and Sid and, and, and Sid Shine there. Went back. That was our first time ever happen, um, doing our shit in New York, and that one was crazy as. Mm. Like all of our shits have been so DIY. It wasn't until like Boxers Five we got like a professional venue. But from like one to four, the most like DIY like yeah. Lone's green room was the kitchen in the back of the warehouse <laughs> like, type of shit. Like, 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 obviously, like y'all been to like enough underground shows yeah, to like yeah. you know some real DIY shit. Yeah. And like you know it was real, just like coming out of our own pockets. It still is like we're still independent. Like we still do that shit. Like it's just me, obviously our team. Like everything is DIY to this day. But it's like. There's certain ways where it's like, all right, like, you know, we're big enough. We can't be doing no fucking, giving fucking yeet of his green room. And it's a 
in like three by three room closet in right. the back. Like we can't be doing that shit. Like it's you gotta like grow Come with up the, to quality the standard as we go, yeah. Production of our shows and whatnot. And that's just something that people don't think about. They just see, yo, show, let me pull up. But it's like, bro, there's so much shit. Have y'all ever like thrown in like a like a show to a certain extent, like a full fledged show? Yeah. Like Sort of like I've usually been like partnered with somebody Partner, on yeah. it and shit. Actually, no, we did a bunch of shows in like 2018, 2019. We did like Chief Keith and Blueface. Yeah. And was it stressful? You Nudie. trying to like mitigate guest lists? And... I honestly, I'm gonna be real with you. I consider doing shows and live events so stressful that I don't even want to do it. Like, mm -hmm. I respect the fuck out of people who do it because I've done it enough times to realize that I just like. I don't know. It just it it just doesn't feel like it's for me. Like I'm so yeah. comfortable doing the podcast thing, but I just like kind of at a certain point like took my uh, ambition to like consistently do yeah. events and was just like you know what I'm just let other people do this because I just don't feel like it's like my thing. Mm -hmm. But I guess that shit also we probably would have kept you going if it wasn't for COVID. COVID, yeah, that yeah. kind of just froze us. <laughs> no, we for sure knocked off a couple years of our life <laughs> due to high stress doing these shows. Bro. <laughs> Telling you, nah. bro, it's like, but I, I won't ever forget this, bro. So, so with Fo, so Fago headlining, we agreed to pay him cash, like just flat out cash. Mm -hmm. And so day of, we went to the bank account, which drew some. We, I think it was like five, six bands. Pretty and much all our money. All of our money that we had left in our bank account, but we weren't trimming because we were gonna make that shit back to the day after with the check of the shows and whatnot. But like we had, we emptied our bank account full cash. We we're in the show, and I like one of my friends. I was I'm like, yo, hold this envelope. And I forgot to mention that there was like five bands in that envelope. And you just like half dingling from his pocket. He's mosh pitting and whatnot. He's in the oh, crowd. Oh, <laughs> and shit. I won't forget like, yo, please don't tell me you lost the envelope. And for like three minutes, it's like, yo, like he was checking his pockets. And I'm like, bro, like there's no, like you, it's like, it's no. It's cooked. But it was in his back pocket. Oh, like, bro, geez, give me that shit. Moments, yeah. I'm not giving the shit to We were nobody. down pretty bad too. We had to ask some homies to like let us borrow an extra band. Just no, it was bad. No, it was like, situations where it's like, bro, like it's either we like just wanted it to we happen. wanted it so bad. Like we had to like, yo, like lend us a band. Like we need a band. We had to go pay interest. so and so. Like, like we need to, like, we'll give you 1100 if you give us this band. So it was like, you know, calling your homies just to help you out. But luckily we sort of like, obviously with all that shit that we had to do, like it sort of built like some consistent, you know, solid foundation where it's like we know how to operate now and mm. how to not, not do no. You know situations where we might get fucked and whatnot. Yeah. Or, or, did you guys partner with uh, someone for one of the box fests or we, Mob we, Nation? We, yeah, or? we 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 did two. Uh, we partnered with one. It was like um, when we did Irvin Plaza, the most recent one with uh, Summers and Homicide, and um, we partnered up with them for the venue and whatnot. And like mm. they sort of helped us mitigate all that. But now we're still independent. People think that you know we like sold to Live Nation. Nah, like we're. 100% Box Boys, me and my More brother. More like a one-off show with right, them. Yeah, they're all like cool. one little one-off. Like, the you know, Box Boys 3 was sponsored by Because like all these venues, bro, they're owned by Live Nation. Like, mm. you got no option to partner up with them. It's either you buy the venue out like three times the price or you pay cheaper price and you partner Work with, up them. with them. They're like the mafia. Yeah, but yeah, yeah that's a real monopoly in that Yo, for shitty sure. feelings I associate with doing live shows. The feeling that nobody's going to come. Because like you know you you can sell some tickets in advance, yeah. but you usually like <laughs> if it's like a 500 person venue, sometimes you'll have like 150, It'll be 200 like 4 tickets. Sold you're advance. refreshing the ticket. Count, yeah, and you're just kind of like fuck. Like, is this gonna be a dud? <laughs> like, are the artists gonna be bummed? And then also, especially our experiences with the Chief Keith thing, is the the fear that the artist isn't gonna come yes. because that motherfucker was so late. And luckily, the venue was cool and let us like do it a little bit later and stuff, so he could actually perform. But I'm standing there on stage like thinking like. I'm gonna owe all I'm about these to fans money. People yeah. right like now. I owe every person in this fucking audience their money back. Yes, Am I seriously gonna have to give them their money back? Like fuck that! Like where the fuck is this dude? Bro, and he I pulls up, and I'm just like, oh place. my god, thank no, god. No, but to the first one you said about like, is it gonna sell out? Is it gonna yeah. sell, bro? Yeah. Me and my brother got like, yo, like we got it, we got it. And like, bro, time and time again, we've sold out every fucking like show. the day of. There has not been a show where we haven't sold out. But it's like, even with like, we have done like ten events, like all of them been just crazy ass shit. If we do an 11th one, we're still going to be like, yo, is it yes. going to sell out? Yeah, it's all, that feeling's like, it's, always it's, there. It's, it's, it's always there. It's no, because you'll start doing bigger venues. Yes. And then it's yes. like, oh, shit, are we going to only do 500 tickets yeah. in a thousand person venue? Like, I'm going to feel like a fucking dickhead. Like, that shit sucks. <laughs> yeah, so, like, no, no, I hate sure. that. But it's like, it's just knowing what moves to make, bro, because I feel like people want to do the big venues too quick. It's reading the rooms. Yeah, yeah, reading yeah, reading yeah, the rooms. Room. Like, knowing what artists you got, what leverage you got. Like, how many people are, like, you know, a guesstimate of, like, all right, if mm. I drop this flyer, I'm going to probably sell, like, 200 first day. And, and it's the best rest, to make the sure. The rest really yeah. don't sell to, like, month off, for real. Yeah. yeah. I hate it. I hate it because it's like, we be we be cutting it close, but then we go, but just bam. And now we have, like, 100 DMs talking about, yo, add more tickets, add more tickets. Yeah. We're like, damn, like, we didn't feel like we'd be in a position like this. Mm. It's best to make a move, like, getting a venue for sure, knowing you're going to sell it out. So, like, if your artist for sure can sell, like, 500 tickets, like, 
get that 450 capacity so it's yeah. guaranteed why would you run it to 700 something like, garbage say is like leave you hanging, sold so. out 500 looks better than yeah like open 7, 1, 750 people in a 1000 because that 200 50 people missing make that venue look mad empty. It's a big the, difference. The problem or like the challenge I feel like for you guys is like as it gets bigger and the venues get more corporate and like are just places that are sort of the people are like more used to seeing like more corporate acts yeah. at. How do you keep the vibe and like make the, the overall ambiance of the shit dope? Bro, there's been times where a venue has pulled out on us because they weren't fucking with the artists we were bringing. Really? And yeah, but that's, that's sort of what that random, happened. Boxer is five. Um, when we had summers in autumn, we were doing it at some venue called the Vermont, and um, week uh, like month like a month before, we're like, "Yo, venue pulled out. They're, they don't rock with like the acts you're bringing." And we're like, "Bro, we like we like." I was like, I was so like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. And so that's one of those things. Like, damn, like we need a fucking venue. Yeah. And but you know, aside from that, like all like the bullshit with the venue, it's like making sure like the artist and the lineup, like it's so like you know they're friends with each other and whatnot. So it's like it's you sort of curate a vibe and aesthetic to the show. And that's sort of how we go about it. But you also ran into a problem that we have, which is that we interview people and then we'll have like interviews back to back and sometimes they'll have beef with each other and it can sometimes end in like a weird situation where we're trying to like keep them away from each other. And mm -hmm. you guys obviously experienced that with the Summers yeah. incident. Man, that was a situation where it's just, you know, you blink and bam, it's just poof, like blow up in your face. And luckily for that, you know, no, like no one got hurt. Like the fans, mm -hmm. fans were safe. No, no, like no guns, no knives. So just, you know, hands being thrown but it was just one of those things where you know you you, you got to learn from and you got to like mitigate artist interaction because mm -hmm. from the day of the show like leading up to the show like no one had beef with each other it was like a situation where it's like something that happened right then and there like oh, it wasn't no right. turmoil no beef to my knowledge but uh, it was just one of those things where it's like you know it happens all right cool like make sure everyone's safe and then yeah and the biggest what, part of it was the fan safety yeah. too. it's like that's whatever what happened after for. like that's on them like it wasn't us but it was one of those things where it's like you know, it was like, bro, it was like a 95% complete show. Me and him on yeah, we stage. Like, yeah, like, oh, it was like, at the God, very end. It was done. at the very end. We're down each other songs. up. I'm looking at, I'm looking at my, my manager and we're like, yo, like we did this shit. And then, bam. And it's like, I turn around, I turn around, look back and it's like, doo, 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 doo. I'm like, yo, yes. what's happening? And it was like, bro, it was crazy. And like, you know, obviously that night was just, bro, my phone was phone just, crazy. I had to put that shit, I had to turn that shit off. I couldn't do it. Cause even me and him were like freaking out. Like, yo, like what's this going to do to us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember as they were fighting the projector from the second story was showing our big ass logo <laughs> on the shit like turn the logo off right, like turn by it then off. the phones turn were it out like, oh, it's all it was too media, late bro. it was too it's late done, but luckily like you know we didn't really get much shit from the fans like it kind of like turned their experience up more but mm -hmm. obviously you know it was more so like you know keeping it professional and you know doing your due diligence big check, learning experience checking sure, up on right? you know both of the teams making sure they're good like yo y'all good but y'all you know you're good but all right you know whatever happens after like that's not us like after the show, after box fest like that, like this ain't us because I can't lie like the original like when I was younger a lot of my most memorable shows I've been to in my life were the most violent ones oh, where there was sure. crazy fights in the mosh pit shit like that but then as an older dude who's able to put myself in the shoes of the person putting on the show that shit just stands out to me as all mm -hmm. bad because you got to worry about the venue being mad at you Is, oh, if somebody really upset. gets hurt are they going to sue upset. you I, uh, uh, you know when I think about a lot of the fucking hardcore and punk shows I used to go to as a kid like I don't understand how the fuck that shit was just allowed <laughs> to happen because it was yeah. just so much fighting going yeah. on you know mm -hmm. yeah. and, and it was just one of those situations where it's like you for real gotta like not let artists interact with each other because you never know what's going to happen like they didn't mm -hmm. have beef but because that venue was built the way it was built and you have to walk in through the green rooms yeah. some shit's bound to happen mm -hmm. especially and if, it, like, if they don't like, know each other yet nine ten events in we had like our first big fight you know right. it wasn't on the first one or the second it was like you know fucking and it, ha it happened down. on stage between popular artists. <laughs> That's like really not ideal from a perspective. It felt like a bad dream, bro. Like, no, for sure. The day after, I'm like, damn, so that fast. should really happen. And like then, in the moment, it was hard to even. I process know it, it was real when like OGM, you know, y'all started posting about it. I'm like, damn, like wait, it's this actually happened? Fuck. Yeah. And it was just, it was, you know, it was one of those things. Like, I bet next show. It, like unless we know that the artists are best fucking friends, we're not letting them interact with each other. Yeah, I think it's something we had to go through too. So like, really make sure we solidify how the safety gets mm. like proceeded through everyone for fans, for artists' exits and entrances, mm -hmm. and like we're learning, bro. Like we're not yeah. even outdoors. Had, um, we're not even doing double, triple stages. I mean, yet. Rolling, rolling loud back in the day, it used to be like backstage areas, everybody hanging out, yeah. all yeah. kinds of shit and could now happen. It's changed. Have you now been to the recent ones, they like oh, bust you straight, in, bro. you perform, and they artist, get you out of there. There's no overlap, bro. Bitch. It's crazy. I was at that's for loud safety. With Chris. Yeah, yeah. Smart as fuck for and them because that's their biggest liability, yes, realistically. Bro. Yes, bro. I remember I was at rolling loud with Chris 
film me and my brother. Yeah, both of those. Yeah. As soon as he gets off stage, put us in a sprinter. They drop. And we didn't know. We were like about to like, hop wait, on that's stage, it? hang yeah. out. Like, I thought I'm trying to enjoy the festival. It's like, now nah, you got to get in the GA line. I'm like, damn. For but, sure. Bro, like I went to the Wireless Festival in London and I got like a Juice World interview, Young Thug interview, Denzel Curry interview, filming shit with Trippy. But it right? was backstage in the UK where they don't have as many security concerns, so they're letting everybody just kick nah, it yeah, on picnic bro. tables. Yeah. And that's why I was able to get so much content and I have never had that kind of experience since in, in America. Yeah. Nah. Even New York, yeah, New York, that New York was recent? probably worse. Not that on. was 2019. But oh, like yeah. I, I tried going to like a bunch of festivals after that thinking like, oh, it's gonna be lit like the oh, other yeah. one. And it never is never like that. I got disappointed just a little bit, but it's like you know, yeah. I see it like knowing what well, you know, where you get shit like what happens at our shit, where people just fighting on one stage. that was cool recently was Summer Smash. They had like an artist lounge, and like yeah. everyone mm -hmm. was cool there. Like the vibes are great. Like, I know, yeah. dudes won't section, beat each other yeah. up because they're so cool with Cole Bennett. Yeah, I don't want to bring that It was Cole. actually Jake, um, you know, Jake Milan from yeah, yeah, yeah. he was actually texting me the day after. He's like, Yo, bro, like you good, you checked up on me, mm. and um, he was just you know, shit happens. You know, he's telling me his experiences, how some similar shit happened to one of his earlier shows, and it made me feel a lot better because it sort of felt like the world is crashing down and I was like, fuck, like our image is fucked. No one's going to want to do our shows. Like, cause you got an idea. That was just like in the yeah, moment yeah. type shit. But it's like <laughs> looking back at it now, you know, I'm not saying that I'm glad it happened, but it was more so like, you know, huge learning. It will go there. down in history as far as like, you know, oh, this under, the underground lore yeah, and whatnot. So I was like, it's cool, you know, but it's like given that it worked out, never letting cool, that yeah. shit happen again. What's the talk with summers after that? I checked up on him. I checked up on him. I called him, make sure he's good. You know, my right, bet you cool. If you need anything, let me know. Obviously, I checked him like the opium team. Make sure y'all y'all good. Y'all yeah. anything? Let me know. It's just keeping it neutral because at the end of the day, like that shit had nothing to do with us. Like yeah, sure. we we're fucking celebrating on stage. Like yeah, like we just do a big bam, ass show. Like, oh, and then shit. bam, fire. We're like all right, fuck. But it's you know it's just keeping it neutral because you know we do fuck with both artists like their artistry, their music. You know they fuck with us too. So it's like you know. There's a there's a fine line between you know us really not picking sides because like it had nothing to do with us whatsoever, mm. and if it has something to do with us, then it was you know then we gotta like it's you a different know situation, we deal our shit yeah. behind the scenes a lot like we don't do like we don't be posting on Instagram or when a problem occurs like I'm the type to like you know call the artists on Facetime like yo like we got a problem I right, but let's talk it out, uh, and that's sort of what happened not that like they had problems with us but like you know I talked to Summers I talked to like the whole homicide team and you know they, you know they were cool required but you know whatever happens after like that's on y'all but you know yeah. i gotta make sure that they're just good because obviously i'm the one who brought them in together so like i had to do my due diligence and like make sure they're good and their teams are good and whatnot but it was cool it was cool like on our side like we had no problems with them after you know what they do on their time that's them when you look at like cole he took just shooting music videos and like built like a brand name on top of it. Now he does all these events and the big yearly uh, festival. And then he did like an album and he's like, I, I think he's like signed all these artists. I'm not sure exactly who he signed, but he's like pushed a bunch of artists that he probably was like participating in. Mm -hmm. That's all shit that he just like built on the foundation of the music videos in your mind. Like is your shit all about just keep doing bigger and bigger and better events? Or are you trying to like, do more kind of like projects under the brand name. That's a real good question. It's a little bit of 50-50 because -50, mm -hmm. I know, um, you know, it's sort of vice versa with us. You know, we're sort of building our shows out and then our, even though we started off as a music video company, but our shows are just what well, hit stronger. Inverse, yeah. So it's our bet like, you know, it's doubling down on the shows, bigger shows, but also, you know, doing an album doing fucking crazy ass music videos with the biggest artist yeah. doing crazy and ass merch the show's definitely set the foundation like mm -hmm. y'all see like what's been done firsthand so like now that that's been done and we are experiencing with that and like we have our brand our merchants and like we have now we have music videos all this month every Friday and we, dropping. we brought it into streaming as well too yeah. so it's like you know we got the foundation with the shows alright let's build on top of that let's do streams let's do merch let's do crazier music videos let's you know and we sort of got into the bag of like hosting artists' album release parties. Mm. Um, we did Dom Corleo's OMO release party. We did Josiah's. We did BK the Rulers. She did a single. It was like a single release party. We also did uh, Half Evil. They did a uh, like a grand closing store show event. Oh, really? we, that was us. Like we did yeah, that. Yeah, the biggest oh, thing that Yaid and I say is like, I guess the shows are its own thing, but if you were to find us through the merchandise or just the music videos, I want something to hit just as big as the shows where it's like, okay, like we caught up with the music videos and they do shows or like we caught up with the shows and they do music videos. So they see that it's equally as big and everything. Yeah. But now we're focusing on like what needs to be pushed in because like what, what we need to feed more because the shows are good. We need to feed the music videos more back to where we are because we got these next two months, once a week, we're dropping with a bunch of artists like Baby Solid, Your Stepdad, a lot mm -hmm. of, we did an Icy Twat run with five music videos. So it's cool to bring that big, 
back into motion, but like that just yeah. needs its own life of its own. So there's like, definitely you see like the a clothes, lot of parts, yeah. the clothes should have its own life and be like, I fuck with this clothes. And it's like, now I can check in the music videos. I can check in the shows. I can check in everything else. But that's kind of like a hub, year. like a hub. Like a big if, hub. if you fuck with our shows, you're going to fuck with music. Even spread out, out, out now. Because if you mm. shoot a music video and it gets a million views, that's dope for your brand, but it's dope in more of like a passive way where like maybe some percentage of the people realize that it was done by you and like that mm -hmm. helps to add to the brand and stuff. But when you do like a show, even if it's 500 people, it's like those 500 people realistically are having like a real, real moment, passionate yeah. experience, a lot mm -hmm, of them, exactly, you know, yeah. and that kind of like builds the brand in a really intense way for a smaller group mm -hmm. of people, you know? And how do you go about it when like when you have like a crazy viral moment on Lone Drop or like how do you monetize off it? Whether it's like gaining more social media followers or, you know, having more people on your show. Like, how do you go about it? When it's weird because a lot of that shit is just like awareness because realistically, some guy will take a moment out of a podcast and put it on TikTok and then get 20 million views. And it's like, we don't make any money from it. This guy probably just made like a thousand <laughs> bucks or like a couple yeah. thousand bucks. And it's like, we can't really do anything about it. You just got to like take it and just be like, well, shit, like that's a bunch more people mm -hmm. that saw my face or like yeah. saw the brand and just might tune in on YouTube. You mm -hmm. just kind of got to. Do you feel like that still converts fans though? Ugh. Sometimes it's hard to tell because it feels like people used to like see clips and then be like, oh, I'm going to go watch the podcast. And now they just like see a clip and they're like, oh, I saw a clip on to the next yeah. clip because their yeah. attention span is so fried yeah. from TikTok mm -hmm. that they're not really like trying to go watch an hour yeah. long interview I feel like but I don't know what I mean, would you say your biggest like anchor is like right now like the podcast right now or yeah I mean the podcast yeah. but then like just putting it in all these different places with like Facebook and Snapchat and like Facebook Facebook, yeah, <laughs> Facebook. all that shit like, people be popping on Facebook so. yeah and I mean some some months we might do just as good on Facebook as we do on YouTube realistically wow. in terms of wow. like money and then the views are probably like crazy mm -hmm. which is weird like different de demographic be because every once in a while somebody comes up to me and is like I watch you on Facebook and I'm like oh okay <laughs> there's, there's one dude there's <laughs> one dude yeah that one no, that's crazy that's you know yeah can't social media can't crazy, overlook bro. the rest I feel yeah. like it's also fried people's attention spans too. Yes. TikTok, including myself, like if that shit's boring first five seconds, I'm scrolling it's, past that shit. It's, right? Right? it's like <laughs> switching channels, bro. It's yeah, so I feel fucked. like if rise your dopamine receptors and you're just like, fuck, I need content, I need like more stimulation. So it's yeah. like, but I mean, it's, it's just an it's just an era of change, bro. Like we gotta adapt to this shit. Like if that's what it is, and like what changes are we putting in, so that now we hold on to people yeah. longer and shit. Yeah. What's our relationship with SoundCloud? Because I see y'all been working on like, bro. Album they or? yeah, they've been fucked with us since like Boxfest too. Um, we didn't do any actual work to the third boxers. They sponsored our show, Boxers Three. But bro, it's one of those things where like it's another full circle moment. Where it was like you know, no jumper, SoundCloud, like all the you know, 2016 rap wave. It's like these are things we just like looked up to and like really like dove ourselves into this whole environment. So shout out Trevor that put his connection. Yeah, shout out Trevor. Trevor's first. really like the, uh, he was like our, our our champion for like you know he's the one who sort of like you know he worked at SoundCloud. He worked and he was like yo like he's the one who told like his you know the bosses like yo like with these people bro like they next up and that's sort of how we sort of built our relationship with them and um since box fest 3 bro it's just been straight support from them you know that we always check in on them like when we do an event we're like yo like y'all trying to fuck with us and they'll be like oh yeah let's do some show or, nah but with this soundcloud album it was more so a thing where it was like you know all right you fucked with us you know with our shows like now let's fuck with you and do some music so it's you know real real beneficial for, for both parties but it's more so it's like that's family yeah like every like every anyone we work with like it's family it's like you know, we got real relationships with them. It's not uh, like we try to keep it as non-transactional as possible because just that's just not the type of people we are. Like we just do it for the love, bro. Like we we just love this. We love the music, the culture, what everyone's been doing on their own. As this much as cool. we try to, yeah, we try to keep yeah. it. Of course, things will be like corporate. To transactional a certain extent, grow, you know, the bigger you get, the more yeah. corporate and but more the relationships yeah. are the biggest. But like thing as far as this underground this shit goes, like no, bro, we love this shit. Like it's just like we live it. We, we would be it. doing this shit without a single dollar to our name, for sure, for and sure. And it's like, but with Sanka, like they just fuck with us too. So for them sponsoring our show, that was like a full circle moment because you know, being 14, 15, not having you to like buy a Spotify plan or it was no, yeah, Spotify, Apple Music and whatnot, and all we had was Sanka. So mm -hmm. it was like for them to like fuck with us. It was like a little cool little. So you guys moment. are dropping like a full blown album? Yeah, we're doing. You know, we're, we we just had the studio session with it. We had like we invited. A yeah, bunch it was of a twelve artists. hour day. We had six like four different slots, and then like that was an exclusive day. We worked with these artists, and then to this day, we're still reaching out opens and other tracks that we can still bring in. Like that couldn't make hitting it. the homies up. And like, you guys yeah, like, live streamed this too because I think yeah, I yeah, live streamed yeah. the whole so, like shit. a good like. 30% of artists were there and like the other 70 are just still coming in from the texts from the emails from yeah. the teams it's like calling you home like yo send me a verse like yeah. I know it happened but you can still, yeah, still like, hop on this shit send your send shit us right a verse and we'll hit up you know yo send us a verse and we'll just push the songs together and yo no you know introduce them to yeah. each other the goal yo. is to get like 100 150 songs and like filter it and then like pull out like 
15. The best 20. 10. Yeah, the best 10. Mm. Something like no, you that. definitely don't want to put on. We don't want to receive 15 and be like, all right. Because imagine bam. I'm skipping my own songs on my own album. Yeah, we don't want to yeah, skip yeah. full album. Yeah. Is the 2024 the drop or? Hopefully end of this year. It's a process, year, like doing this, this whole album. I, y'all have done music before through No Jumper, right? Like take it. Um, more hosting, songs. Right? Yeah, posted songs. Honestly, like the craziest shit that I that I've seen this year in terms of just like seeing somebody do something that I've never done and like realizing just how crazy it can be is watching Cole do that album mm-hmm. and seeing like I, I'm sure it got a lot of love, but also just seeing people like really hyped to shit on it. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, dude, because I've never spent a year of my life working on a project, you yeah. know? Yeah. And it would be such a crazy feeling for me to like put a year into a project and people then have it come out it. and have people just sort of casually nah. be like, ah, oh, this shit ass, you know? Like, with, people are just too close minded. I, I believe bro. it still sold like pretty well and stuff. I'm sure he's happy with nah. how it did and everything, but like, I think I don't people know. just had different expectations. They wanted the Yeats, the, you know, See, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the famous decks and like, in there and all hey, that. you know, mm-hmm. people were here, but Cole was over here. And like he really like he's someone I really respect because he does not give up he his integrity. His word. Yeah. He does not give up his integrity by any means. Mm-hmm. So it's like he he didn't give a fuck that people shout on it because he was just happy with the product that he put out. Right. And it's like you know, not gonna lie, I was sort of like, yo, we, we about to get a heat song, you know, famous, you know, about some old lyrical elimination. But no, he was on. He was fucking twenty thousand years forward and he just he did some shit that was true to him yeah but i felt like he still tried to like wrap it in with a lot of like he, he put like famous decks oh, and the rich sure forever shit some, on it but for shit. sure like that's the problem when you're running a brand for like eight years or ten years or however long he's been doing that shit is that he had like all these people that he's done music with and had relationships with and stuff and like you get those fans and then they might expect you to always mm-hmm. be fucking with those artists yeah. when realistically you might have moved on to yeah, some other on. shit yeah. and especially with him putting out like a video or two a month for all these years yeah. like this there's, there's so many different fans you get that want yeah. different things from no, you, you know? sure. I just feel, I feel like, like people like, don't understand artist growth too yeah yes yeah that's, that's, that's a big deal thing. they like they're stuck in their ways and like we need the old the oldest artist back we need the oldest yeah they're, back. They're, they're stuck in, a, in, a, in an era they're too stuck in an era i'm yeah. pretty sure y'all have y'all fans like oh, yeah. bring back the ex and suicide boy interviews yeah. like we want more of those but it's like no bro like there's growth bro like if i had stuck to trying to just make those fans happy it's like it would have been impossible because there's only so many suicide boys like how many different Different artists have come out that have like appealed to that exact demographic since then. Like not mm-hmm. that many. Not like that much, they're bro. still just like kind of hitting their apex right now. I mean, yeah. we don't know how big they could get, but I just seen them rock rolling loud and it was bro. fucking gigantic. But they do like 16k venues. Like, Crazy. Yeah. God damn. But it's like you know the people who are listening to X and Suicide Boys. You know they're not listening to Ken Geet or Lone. Right. Same way. Yeah, not world. the same Separate way. Separate worlds. Yeah. So it's like you can only please. Exactly. You know, you got to find that balance. And that's the same situ- issue in the next five years. Like, yeah. we have to be ready for that. And for me, it's like people would be like, oh, I miss the old No Jumper. I'd be like, I interviewed 10 underground rappers this week. And it's just not there. But like, if you fuck with like Bronx Drill, if you're like a Suicide Boys fan, you probably don't know anything about Bronx Drill. So when yeah. we post the interview with like so and so, you're looking like, at it like, who the fuck, is, the fuck is, yeah. is this? Yeah. But like, I'm just like overtly curious and like interested in new rappers. I can't like expect the whole audience yeah. to all be on mm-hmm. board with like fuck with all these different sounds mm-hmm. and artists and shit. You know. So do, do you do you try to be hip at all times so you know who to fuck with and who to you know who to. I try to. It's, it's it's just it's hard to like be doing the interviews and then also like paying attention to who's popping and stuff. So that's yeah. why it's dope to have somebody like Remio no, over he's here. Who, he's Remio, bro, right? You got yeah, people. Remo this whole time. <laughs> no, but the Remo Quando Rondo interview. interview we just did. He he gave Remo like ten different fucking names. Remo, <laughs> Remo, Remo. <laughs> Remo. <laughs> Romeo. It was crazy, oh, bro. No, he just kept no, fucking every out, shout every shout minute. Out, he would give you a new name. No, yeah. I'm glad he tapped in with us too, with it, especially with the early start of. No, because he was supposed to pop out to boxes fire, but our shit got fucked with like the guests. So my brother, like, you gotta come to the next one. But the next one was in New York, so I'm like, fuck yeah. it. You know, next time we, we do out here, like, y'all, I'm we'll down. Let's most do it. definitely yeah. invite. I want to see all that. We got, we got some little one-offs coming off this year. Uh, so no, but it's got to be a big one. We're trying to take boxes outdoors now. For That's next, awesome. next year. It, who? What's your ideal lineup for the next box fest? Realistically, Ooh, you got like, sure way. Keeping it within Just like three headliners. Bam, bam, bam. Three headliners. Definitely. Friday, Lone. Saturday, Sunday. Lone was like that one artist that was like, you know, we caught him right before he blew the fuck up. So we definitely got to throw back alone. I'll get alone. I'll get Yeet. And I'll get, let me see, who else? I'm trying to think off the top of my head. <sighs> and I'll probably get, you know, so Fago. Mm. I feel like Fago, you know, Fago's, you know, he's coming. He's coming, bro. You, you know, got he, the same three or? A uh-huh. little different. I would probably throw in like Baby Keem in there. Mm. Like if we're talking like five, ten years from now, like we're, like, is that we're talking about? No, like we're talking about the next one. Next one. Next, next one. So keep it realistic. Okay, realistically, I would want to do like Glock 40 Spaz. Mm. Yeah, free Glock, Glock, Glock 40 Spaz. Free Glock, Glock man. Top. Got to throw Icy Twat in there. 
and then really if we could throw baby Kia in there, I feel like that's a good level of work that we yeah. we're going. Now you got to put baby Kia on door. that. Baby, baby Kia, yeah. baby yeah. Kia's been yeah. going out. I see that out there. Crash nah. out. Vibes. We also did uh, we did Glock's album release party in jail. Well, while he was you know, obviously he's still he's still locked up, free him. But um, bro, his manager Ben, he was like, "Yo, like you trying to do this shit?" I was like, "All right, bet." So we hopped on a call while he's in jail, as we we're planning his release party. That he's not even gonna be there for, mm. which is cr- such a crazy like process because it's like you know we're doing all this crazy ass shit for an artist that's not even gonna be there. But mm. it was a unique went experience, crazy yeah. as fuck. You know, it was our first time in, uh, doing some shit in Atlanta. The highlight of it was his mom walking around with him. Yeah, his jail. mom was walking with, like, with him on Facetime through like the jail phone call. He was just like turning he was in, up. He was turning up. <laughs> and, like, it, was, bro, it was such a beautiful thing, and, like seeing his mom support and. And just like, bro, like, it's, you know, music really, you know, it's bigger than all of us, bro. Like, music can make anyone do anything. So it's like the fact that we were able to pull off a whole album release party for an artist that wasn't even there. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, that's crazy as fuck. There, bro. He had yeah. his people there, too, which his was people cool there, support, Yeah, man. But. Free Glock, bro. So when he does come out, we're, we're like, where are we? Like, I'm marking my yeah. words. We're going to be the first people to book him for a show mm-hmm. in Atlanta or LA or New York. I'm it's going to be 2K people be there, bro. It's going to be lit. As far as the underground scene right now, who are you guys more excited about like right now? Like who you feel like can carry it to the next level? <sighs> that's, that's a good amount. You know Highway, bro. You know Highway? Mm. Highway's a good one. Obviously Ian. A lot of people are talking about Ian. Yeah, I've been eyeing out Ian a lot. Ian hard as fuck. Laser Dim for sure. Laser Dim for sure. Yeah, for sure. Like He's been Thursday. Thursday. He yeah. showed it. Totally showed it. Dot com, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's that Friday or Thursday? I think it's Friday. Is it Friday? April 5th. Okay. Okay. On Friday, yeah. He was just telling me we got to go. Yeah. No, Laser Dim hard as fuck. Who else? Who else? Who else? Um, Osama Sun, Osama Sun going Ned crazy. Spin, like these are all people that just you know, just changing the game, bro. Like you know, these kids just fuck with them because they resonate with them. They they want to live like that that lifestyle. I feel like that's like the closest they can get to it. And like they're real, like the, that community's there, bro. It's, like it's crazy to see like you know, people who may not be in that position to like you know think they could have a fan base, but you, you go on the internet, they got fucking hundred k followers. Mm. So it's like that community's there, bro. So it's like it's crazy. It's just crazy to see how people adapt and change and. That, fuck with who they fuck with. That 100k followers is like so much more valuable than like a passive 100k followers. Like a lot of people have 100k followers that like do not give a fuck about them because yeah. yeah. they're fake or they like got them kind of like slowly through doing skits or some yeah. bullshit. Yeah, you know, yeah. like oh this yeah. guy's funny, I'm a follower. But if you have like 100k people that are like buy merch, go to your show, fucking mm-hmm. subscribe to your Patreon, whatever it is, like real hardcore fans that want to see you win, that shit's like invaluable, bro. That's bro. That's that's something you can't lose, bro. Like mm-hmm. a fan, like that, like not even a fan of supporter, bro. That's like. That's what, you know, we're here because because of supporters, man. Like, you know, supporters are just everything, man. You, you can't do nothing without supporters. Like, no point of For us throwing shows. Bro, like, our music videos, we don't got, views are all them, We don't got supporters pulling up to the show. Like, support, like, that, you know, supporters make the world go around, bro, with this whole entertainment shit. Facts. What's your relationship with, uh, I always say Tyreek, but it's Tarek, right? From Tarek. Yeah. It's fresh. It's fresh. That's, but but it's, that's, 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 that's big bro, for real. Like, that's sort of, you know, he... He's someone we look up to with how he built his whole empire mm-hmm. with shows and shit. And it's like, you know, it's him. It's, you know, Kelvin. Kelvin, him, you know, it, it just the whole like the Rolling Loud team, like yeah, bro, like, yeah they, like officially ran into him in, at Complex Comics. Yeah, and, that's and when we they, fully they, you know, it up. it's sort of mm-hmm. like a it's sort of like a mentor, sort of because like he be giving me points in the game, like yo, like I should do this, I should do this, you know, you know, if you're gonna do this, do this, because you know, this is gonna happen. Like he, they've been through it all, like yeah, they yeah. literally started where we started. And he be telling he be telling people like yo, like y'all are like a, you know, where you know I see y'all, I see it, I see y'all on us, and it's like you know, so it's like for someone who's where we want to be, like that's you know that's that's where we're trying to be for real. So it's like it's learning and being a sponge and soaking in their mistakes, their errors, what they do good, what they don't do good, and you know applying it how we want to apply. It. But that's family, bro. That's you know that, that's that's big, bro, for real. Mm, for sure. Um, yeah, I appreciate you guys coming through for appreciate sure. The time and and I'm excited to see where it goes. I'm excited to actually pull up to an event and no, see what it's sure. like. And, uh, yeah, you guys definitely got your head screwed on straight, and you guys are going to be doing big shit, and people are going to be looking at this interview down the road like, damn, like, they really had the fucking the motivation. Yeah, the passion. Right. You just got to keep your foot on the gas and don't get hooked on lean, because that's usually, <laughs> that's usually what's lean. Lean. No, We're <laughs> drug-free, bro. Just no, be we're drug-free out here. Yeah. In there, but that's it. No, nice. Yeah. No, nice drugs. Sure. Cool. Yeah. Knock someone off, bro. Yeah, it's not no, good. We're sharp on that. We're, Especially we're, doing we're, events. Yeah, yeah. When you, you really got to like hustle it. your fucking no, yeah. ass off. To no, yeah. Make promoter, that shit if work. you see a drug that promoter, is like, yo, what are you doing, guy? Yeah, like, you're going to stay here the next 10 years, really, is what I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. All right. Thank you very much, Remo, for uh, setting this up. Yes, sir. Appreciate yeah, you guys for having us, man. Box Fest, Box Boys, we out. Hey, No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, Instagram. Like, comment, and subscribe. NoJumper.com if you want to support. Wow.